Hi all, welcome to the educational course. I'm Chao Gan Yan, a professor from Institute of Psychology, Chinese Academy of Sciences. It's my great honor to attend this educational course. I'm sorry that uh, I got my ankle wound, so possibly I might not be able to attend in person, but I hope in the future we can have more communications. Today, my topic is quality control procedures for FMR in DPABI. Um, as you may know, uh, Taylor and uh, friends have organized a special issue in Frontiers. So the issue is demonstrating quality control procedures in FMR. And there are 11 articles, including ours, and if you want to know more about quality control, I recommend you to read this whole issue. Quality control is a very important uh, step in data analysis. There are many different artifacts, like AMR artifacts, ghosts, chemical shift, and uh, we can also have high motion in FMR data. Now, when scanning, you may have low brain coverage. And also, uh, there might be structural occupancy or abnormality, or you can even have raw metadata like GR, like spatial resolution. And even we may have bad preprocessing, like a spatial normalization, surface reconstruction. And all of these types, if you have low quality, we cannot let those data with a low quality enter our final statistical analysis, or we may have very bad results, or we have artifactual results. So if you want to know more, that uh, you can read uh, the special issue. We need to do quality control, exclude a lot of artifacts. There is also bias induced by poor image quality if you don't carefully quality control your data, you may have very low reproducibility or have very high false positive rate. Or even if the, the, the artifacts add somewhere, you may have false negative rate or you have failed preprocessing. So quality control is a very important step. And uh, there are many different tools in quality control like MRQC, FM Prep, CPAC, Hard Prep, including all the Parby. However, there's no single correct way for quality control. When you read the special issue, you can read Taylor's paper that um, we have the same subjects, but we have different teams. Different teams use their procedure to quality control the same data set. So from here you can see, so for different groups, we have include, we have uncertain, we have exclude. So you will see different groups may not agree with each other very well, which data should be exclude. So there's a lot of discrepancy when we call it control our data. So I hope Taylor's effort, that special issue can make us have more agreement or consensus to how to quality control all data. You will see for some team almost exclude a uh, lot of data and some team almost uh, include all the data. So this is very different and you can read the article for details. And uh, when you do the analysis, if you do not carefully do quality control, for example, high motion effects, you can read the powers in your image paper. So when the data included, if we do not do the high motion quality control, you will see there's no effects in prefrontal the cortex. And if you do correct high motion correction like scrubbing, you can see the head, you can see the effect recovered. So this is important. The head motion has big artifacts in our data. This is detrimental in many studies. For example, when you do development study, kids usually move their heads much more than adults. When you do disease study, 
for example, schizophrenia. Then schizophrenia patients move their heights much more than controls. So you add the effect you found, whether it's reflect true neuronal effect or just to reflect high motion artifact. Also, you can find in this human remapping paper that this also find uh, the morphology artifacts. And also, you may be interested in this neural image paper. If there's no quality control, there are lots of quadratic or cubic development effects. And if you do standard quality control, there's less. And then you do stringent quality control, there's still effects that much less. And we said that uh, in development studies, kids move their hearts much more. So you need to carefully quality control your data. So quality control, we know it's important how to perform that. Different software provide different tools for helping quality control. So in all software of DPAV, we have the volume-based approach QC module for DPASF. And also we have surface-based approach. We have the QC module for DPIB stuff. So you can see from the quality control panel, we have all the subjects. We get quality control raw T1 data, raw functional data, quality control normalization, quality control these effects and the generic group masks, and then quality control the brain coverage. And also we can see the motion effects and the quality control the motion. And for deep hub itself, we can do surface reconstruction to quality control, quality control EPI to T1 registration, quality control T1 to MR registration, and also can quality control the bold coverage and head motion. So these are standard quality control steps in deep hub. Here I would like to have a very brief introduction to the software deep hub we developed. So, there are lots of pre-processing toolbox in the field like FSL, SPM, Alphany, Free Surfer. They have lots of steps and configurations and some software are very difficult to learn. So in big data era, we need new pipelines, very easy to use to handle big data. So uh, in 2010, I built a software called DPASF and it has been set more than 3000 times. And I included this module and adapted my methodology updates. Today, I do not have enough time to talk about uh, my work on addressing high motion artifacts, on addressing standardization, on addressing multiple comparison correction. If you're interested, you can read all papers or our ESI top highly cited papers. So these updates we included in our DPIB software. We have standardized the pre-processing we provide a statistical toolbox and we provide a platform for data sharing. So this we include all in one called the Pabi published in 2016 Neuroinformatics. And this toolbox has been set in more than 2,200 times. It's a ESI top 0.01 percent highly cited paper. Users including Sage Ogawa, the inventor of a board. So most uh, uh, countries have doing neural imaging research has using our software. And then with the software, we build a data sharing platform that uh, we invite the users. So they use our software to perform standardized pre-processing and after standardized pre-processing, we only share the results and uh, the raw data is still at the local groups or local hospitals and we can do big data analysis and then resharing the results. So this it can be data collaboration. And also our first module DPASS is volume based. But as you may know, now surface based analysis is very prevalent in the field. So you may read this PNS paper. So the traditional approach using volume based is only 35% as good as the best surface-based methods. They also provided uh, validations. For example, in this figure, that's very clear on the surface, but on the volume base is very vague. You now the uncertainty on volume base is very big and in the uh, surface is very clear. And also they have different methods to perform 
uh, to examine why surface-based analysis is better than volume-based. They also discussed why the field is still not widely using the surface-based approaches. For example, the design to replicate or compile with the existing studies that use a traditional volume-based approach. And importantly, the relative, the lack of turnkey tools for learning a surface-based analysis. So not, there's no very easy to use software. And then the learning curve for adopting surface-based analysis methods. It's very difficult to learn. And there's also some others like awareness of the problem with the traditional volume-based analysis, the uncertainty or even skepticism as to how much of a difference these methodological choices make. So there's a, two important things we need to adjust the relative lack of turnkey tools for running a surface-based analysis and a learning curve for adopting surface-based analysis methods. So if you want the widely used of the software, then we need to make it very easy to learn, very easy to use. So we spend a lot of time to develop DeepRive Surf. DeepRive Surf is based on FMR Prep, FreeSurfer, ANS, FSL, Alphany, Palm, Geo, Para, MATLAB, Docker, and DeepRB. So basically, we integrate all of these modules for our users. They do not need to exactly know how we call different modules. So all the under the hook, but they only need to have one click, have the DeepRB surf processed uh, surface-based results, mostly by Alphabet Prime. And we have the, 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 the module, we have a pipeline. It's just one click, you have all the types of surface-based analysis methods. We also provide a very easy to use DeepRB surf viewer to view the surface-based results. This can also be used in our quality control style. And we later we also develop DeepRB Night. This is for very easy to use uh, network or graph theoretical based analysis for brain imaging, because previously we may need to learn how to code it to do network analysis. But with the DeepRB Net, you can use the GUI to analyze your brain network data. You can use it to network construction and uh, do graph theoretical analysis. Uh, you can do static analysis and uh, you can view your network results, have the matrix display, have the circus display and have brain net viewer display. And recently we developed a new tool called DeepRB Fiber. DeepRB Fiber is designed as DeepRB Surf. We call the QSI prop as a core module, but very easy to use to put the uh, uh, DTI or DWI data processing in one click. We can analyze FA, ADC, TBSS, we can do the whole brain uh, fiber reconstruction. We use it very easily to do AFQ and uh, do structural matrix connector analysis and do structural functional coupling. Okay, I have introduced to you, we have a lot of work on the brain imaging software. So let me bring back today's main topic, the quality control procedures in DeepRB. So basically, we have the QC module for DeepRB in volume-based approach, and we have the QC modules for DeepRB surf, surface-based approach. So let's see, if you're interested, you can read uh, the whole issue and all paper. There are lots of QC criteria we need to understand, and we need to examine our pictures. For example, we have, can we check low brain coverage? The qualitatively and the qualitatively, so you can use DPASS and use QC report to do the low brain coverage uh, the examination that as later we will see. And also, if there's a severe signal losses in temporal lobe, if there's a high motion related artifacts, um, other MR artifacts, and if there's a flipped uncertain scan direction, uh, Anomalous structure occupancy or abnormality, or you can examine the height motion like using maximum height motion exceeding three millimeter or three degree, 
Uh, later, we use the average frame width displacement exceeding 0.2 millimeter. And you can also examine by the bold T1 concentration, hard motion related artifacts, other M artifacts. And uh, this is uh, also examining functional data flipped or certain scan direction. And for surface analysis, we also can check the bad brain surface reconstruction. We have that in DeepSurf QC surface reconstruction report. And you can see if we have bad skull stripping, and a bad spatial normalization, and also had motion rate artifacts. And also there's a low signal to noise ratio, a number of structure of pencil bombing, and of a normal TR number of volumes. So all we can use as QC criteria in our data analysis, and we can check that uh, in DPIB, DPASP, and the DPIB surf. So for example, uh, for volume-based approach, the first thing we need to quality control the data quality. So there is a QC rating scores in the reorient QC module in DPASP. So the reorient QC module is GUI designed for visually tracking and manual orientation, adjusting the raw T1 weighted data and the functional images. So basically, we can let the users to visually view each subject's T1 data and the functional data. So we have their first impression of that data. So the QC scores for each subject, you can give the QC score because you have visually checked each subject. You can give a QC score very poor or fair or very good. If it's very poor, you can make a QC comment here. And uh, in these steps, for example, the QC scores below three you can exclude them in further pre-processing that uh, prevent in future have processing errors. And you can leave a command if this is very low because this have a tumor or has a very high, big hand motion noise. So you can uh, quality control each, each image uh, one by one, just uh, the program will pop up. You do not need to open anything, just pop up for you and you can do the quality control. And also like a quality control raw T1 and the functional data as previously demonstrated, you can also quality control normalization. So once you click quality control normalization, you can have this kind of figure that um, on the top left is, uh, is a T1 image uh, normalized in a mass space. And you can see the yellow outline is a template image white might uh, gray might boundary. And you can, the top right is a uh, MI space bold data. And also you can see MI space uh, gray might density map. And on the bottom right is, is the uh, uh, MI template image. So you can give the scores very poor, fine or very good. And you can QC, give QC command. So from here, you can do do the quality control and you can view your pictures and you can see if they are quality controlled very well. So during this kind of quality control step, you can easily to explore or track if your data, for example, have motion artifacts. You, have, you can see in the T1 data, the rings have big motion artifacts and have the ghost or have chemical shift artifacts and I'll have aliasing artifacts and I have spikes. This is a single peak in K space. I'll have zipper. So I would like to thank Dr. Lui Wangfang to providing me these examples. So you can view the data that if they have this kind of a byte quality, definitely you need to exclude them to your further analysis. And also you can see some data, for example, this kind of weird image. This is metal decoration of high gel. So, and also you can see the dentist effect. So for this kind of image, you may need to mark a uh, very poor and uh, remove that in your future analysis. And also we have another spatial normalization quality control check. In the pictures for check normalization, you can open the images we have a, a MNR template 
uh, as an underlay, and you have the uh, MS based board image overlay, you can check the spatial normalization effects. And for this is for tracking the board MR board data, uh, functional data normalized well or not. And you can check the board data if there's ghost, if there's inhomogeneity, and if there is a bad coverage. So you can you can test all this and uh, make your notes. And uh, you can also do head motion quality control. So the head motion quality control, we can check in DPAS for the pipe surf pipelines. There were basically two reports about head motion of participants. The first one is a brief report for excluding participants with a several common use rules, for example, minimal maximum regional displacement or rotation exceeding three millimeters or three degrees. So you can, in the realignment parameter folder, you can have the exclude subject according to max head motion. And also another one is we will have a spreadsheet recording the height motion in different directions and the framework displacement. You can use another, this as another cross strategy. So this is a spreadsheet. We have subject ID, we have different misers. And the last column is a, a mean frame by displacement Jackson. So you can exclude them who have a mean FD bigger than 0 0.2. And uh, this is demonstrate uh, how, what subject you need to remove. And also the, as we call it, the pipe surf called FMA prep. So FMA prep also generated some dynamic graph for tracking consideration between structural images and functional images for each participant. And you can, in the query control, you can use, for example, the query control EPI to T1 HTML. It uh, will lay out every subject that uh, how their uh, EPI to T1 correlation going well. And you can also click the surface reconstruction HTML, have different subjects. You can see how the how well the surface reconstructed. And you can also view the spatial normalization of an anatomical T1 reference. And uh, you can also track the metadata. For example, in DPASF or DPASF, we have a trinfo.tsv, this is a spreadsheet file. So if you have a abnormal metadata record, such as small number of volumes, and the time points, for example, one subject has a missing, for example, missing 10 time points, or missing 23 time points, you can see very easy to see in the time points. And then you can see if the voxel size correct, size number correct, TR correct. So you can use this to view the metadata. So I would like to uh, take uh, some examples from the special issue. For example, we found uh, the sub 519, this needs to be excluded because this subject have high motion related artifacts in the T1 image is very clear. And sub 101, the T1 image is very clear. So this is included. And also the bad brain surface reconstruction. For example, subject 508, this is excluded because the brain surface reconstruction is not so well. The sub 101, the surface reconstruction is good. And also we can see the better spatial normalization for sub 508 and of sub 101 is very good. And also you can see other artifacts in sub 305 and the sub 101 is good. And also you can see this subject 719 has abnormality in white matter. So you may need to exclude this subject because the brain abnormality in the sub-11 is good. And also there is some data, for example, sub-151A, the Z axis is flipped. So we need to exclude this subject because we figure out this, uh, this data is abnormal. And uh, for 509, have very large ventric. We mark it as uncertain but because it's based on your on your on your research aim. If your research aim is want to research this kind of effect, you include, but uh, if your research is normal subjects, you need to include. And also the bad scar stripping, you will see sub 312. 
And uh, finally, we use all, we have a big uh, data based uh, brain science classifier because we do not have a clear phenotype data uh, to do group comparison. So we use our brain epigenetic brain sex classifier, classified into two sex, and then we do two sample t test. If you don't do quality control, you will have these kind of effects much weaker. And then if you do quality control, we have stronger effects. And also for FF without quality control, the effects, the sex effects is uh, weaker, but if quality control, we have stronger effects. Okay, so here I have demonstrated you how to use deep RB to do quality control, both volume space or surface space. If you want to learn more about uh, deep RB, deep RB surf, deep RB, you can go to upm.org slash course to uh, learn our free online course. And I would like to thank uh, my collaborators, my students, and thank you very much for your attention. Thanks.